The school put the sizes of all our penises up on a big chart in the school hallway. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> SARS outbreaks, things that trigger Cartman, and the brown note. Today, we are back at it, breaking down some of the funniest medical scenes and over-the-top injuries from South Park. All right, let's dive right in. If four million people play the brown noise at the same time... One, two, three, pizza! No! Oh! <laughs> Sometimes people actually have an event where they actually have incontinence of their bowels, meaning that they cannot actually control holding their poops in. Like literally as the body peristals to let the stool out, it just flows out and you have to wear like diapers and you run the risk of getting significant amount of urinary tract infections if you're always kind of covered in fecal matter. Tom, I'm standing in New York City, but it could just as well be any town on Earth right now. The desolation, the damage is exactly the same in every city the whole world over. Wow, just looking at that scene, there was like poop on the, the envelopes going into the mailbox, all over the ground. I will tell you that people will poop in the emergency department, they will poop on the floor, they'll poop in the beds, they'll poop as they walk. It's been just under 20 hours since everyone on Earth pooped their pants and people still roam their damaged homes with disbelief and loss. Imagine that there was a way to use this sound to therapeutically help people who are significantly constipated. You're able to use the sound instead of having to ingest a chemical into the body. Obviously in the emergency department, I'm dealing with an emergency in that one moment. Trying to help people get stool out of their body, we try to do potentially a whole bowel irrigation, which is giving medications by mouth to help get it out. God damn it! I love Cartman. We all took okay. last week. Yeah. Well, the school put the sizes of all our penises up on a big chart in the school hallway. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> And I do remember school physicals. They're checking for like scoliosis. They have you like bend over and they're looking for like the hump, potentially getting like hernia checked. If I'm looking for a hernia, I'm not feeling the testicles per se. I'm actually feeling above where the spermatic cord comes out higher up where the pubic area is. When you cough, you increase intra-abdominal pressure and you push the intestines further down if there's a defect in the wall that then needs to be repaired. Why would they tell everybody that? They want to measure my wiener? Fine, but don't put me on blast! I told you the students would be interested in how much they grew since their last physical. Oh my gosh, so it's the growth of their height and not the size of their genitalia. I do remember that they always um, check their heights, but I even remember my own house. We went against the, like the doorpost and my mom would put a mark with a ruler and measure us over the years. Did any of you do that or still do that in the house? Let me know. Hey, wait, the code is making it shrink some. Where you going, little feller? <laughs> it definitely does. It has to do with blood flow. And when it's cold, the blood flow basically goes to our core of the, the body and gets you know shunted from the extremities, including your genitalia. And same with the scrotum. The scrotum shrinks up as well. If it's cold out, it brings the testes closer to the body to keep them warm. Hang on, he's coming back out. There he is. Who's a little guy? I love how he's talking to his Looks like we have two point, wow, 2.4 inches. Really nice, but <laughs> I'm hung like a horse. <laughs> Very awkward when you're at the doctor's office and we have to do exams. We basically try to cover everything. Our main purpose is only to make sure that you're fine. What we need to figure out here is, are we dealing with maybe a little bipolarism, some rage addiction? There's actually multiple different types of bipolar. It typically has to do with periods of depression, periods of potential mania or up. Um, sometimes people are more prone to one than the other. Some people will say at the blink of an eye, if you change from being depressed to super happy that you're bipolar or vice versa, it typically doesn't work that way. It's usually like days on ends of one behavior and then days on ends of other. And then depression, not eating, sleeping all the time, not interested in anything, thoughts of potentially wanting to hurt yourself. Honestly, I wouldn't really care. I think you're way too fat for your age. <laughs> <laughs> totally inappropriate. Should not be trying to entice this kid to, into anger. Well, I just don't see it, Miss Cartman. Your son doesn't seem to be triggered by anger at all. In fact, I'd say he's one of the more even-tempered children I've ever seen. Sorry, doctor, your wife's on the phone. Says it's an emergency. I mean, web chat with what? <laughs> 
No, I don't have a criminal record. Who? Uh, 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 uh. I'm not fat. I'm big boned. <laughs> this big bone theory we have out there. Very rarely. I literally get x-rays and MRIs and CT scans every day that I work and we can actually see people's bones. And the majority of them are normal sized bones. There may be issues of how people may have higher deposits of muscle or fat in certain areas of the body, which make it feel like somebody is big bones. Typically, we're all pretty much the same. The length of the bones are different, but the thickness of them don't vary that greatly. Finding the right person for the help is also a huge thing you need to think about because you need to develop a relationship with this individual who's trying to help you. And if you don't trust them or you don't believe them, it may not help you and you may need to seek uh, somebody else. Tom, it's Tuesday what the morning heck? now and the outbreak of SARS in South Park has reached epic proportions. Oh no, so we have SARS. SARS is Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome caused by a coronavirus. The first time we ever saw this where it was severe enough to hit the news recently was like 2002, 2003. So it hit people really hard, but it actually kind of burned out fast where it couldn't spread as fast as SARS-2, which is what we call COVID-19. <coughs> The entire town has been quarantined by the federal government. Nobody allowed in or out, which means nobody can come to our aid. I hope we learned a bunch from this most recent pandemic relating to a coronavirus on how to handle different situations, quarantining. Viruses continue to evolve, so there's potentially going to be something in the future that we need to deal with. Figuring out how to deal with it appropriately is of the utmost you know, importance. One spoke to me and told me the middle-class white way to cure SARS. Campbell's chicken noodle soup, Dayquil, and Sprite. I mean, those things, soup, Dayquil, Dayquil, which is a type of, a, typically a cough medicine, different types of ingredients in there, and Sprite helps with like bubbles, gas, carbonation, helps possibly with nausea. <laughs> Everybody's doing great. <laughs> Viruses in general are very hard to treat because they're not as easy as antibiotics. Bacteria infections, we're able to treat those pretty easily because we have antibiotics. Antibiotics are for bacterial infection. Viruses, we have antiviral medications, but they're not as good. They don't work as strongly. Um, they don't just eradicate the virus. The body still needs to fight the viral infections, but maybe the antiviral medications will subdue it a little bit, bring it down so the burden is not so high or it might reduce the symptoms by maybe a day. South Park, always good, always has really good topics and is always right on top of it with using some actual like real information. So if you guys enjoyed this, definitely check out this playlist right here, binge watch everything. And as always, make sure you subscribe, turn your bell notifications on and hit that like button for me. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.